I'm gonna talk about a champion that is perhaps a forgotten champion right now, but still an absolute monstrous support, which is Alistar. And I really feel like people forgot how to play Alistar. And you know what was a bit of a shocker to me? Because yesterday I played this Ash support game and this enemy picked Alistar. Like, look at this dude. He destroyed me. He destroyed me. Like, it was not even funny what happened in the Dragon Lane. And I'll tell you all about it because I have those Alistar games as well, you know. One of my one of my best friends in Wild Rift is one of the best Alistar players, um, you know, in the game. So I learned a lot from him as well. It's keys, by the way. So in today's video, I'm going to explain to you guys exactly how you play Alistar. And it's different than you may think. So during the build part, it already starts out. And I'll explain to you why it's different. If you ask any top Alistar player... They'll probably tell you that first item is going to be a dead man's plate and that you want to be as fast as possible. Why, you may think, right? Like, why? Why does Alistar want to be fast? Let me tell you exactly why. You want to rotate. You want to rotate all the time and gank lanes like crazy. Also, you can very easily chase down enemies that are quite low as an Alistar if you have all these movement speed items. Of course, you start with a relic shield, though. But dead man's plate, I would honestly say... Every single Alistar game, you go Deadman's Plate first. I'm trying to think of a scenario where you don't go for it first. Perhaps if you're against full, full AP, like everyone is AP, you can start off with an Abyssal Mask, perhaps, and then just go for full Magic Resist. But, you know, in a normal game, I would say, any any game, honestly, um, you go for Deadman's Plate first. Now, for the boots, um, Mercury Threats are great. However, you don't necessarily need them because your ultimate will cleanse all CC. Like, if you get stunned for a long time, you can just ult and it will cleanse it. Mm. Armor boots are great as well. Like, if you need armor, go for armor boots. Second item. Now, here it becomes fun because I like to play Alistar as a bit more of a carry myself. You know, you can play a supportive Alistar where you go for Zeke's Convergence second item, for example, or like Frozen Heart, Randwin's Omen, you know, Thorn Mill, Dawn Shroud. Dawn Shroud is a really good item as well, by the way, if you if the enemy has invisible enemies. You know, you can go for these types of items, but I love to go Sunfire Ages because this item will make you a menace to deal with. You can you can pretty much 1v1 ADCs. It depends on the ADC, of course. Like you're not gonna 1v1 Vayne, but you can 1v1 a lot of squishy champions when you have this, when you have Sunfire Ages, and you're just gonna be so annoying for the enemies. And then here it's situational. Here it Totally depends on how good your team is, what you need, how good the enemy team is, etc. If you have a good ADC, you go for the Zeke's Convergence third. That, like, it's going to be unbelievably powerful if you have a good ADC. Amaron Twin Guard you can go for as well. Now, this one is good if the enemy doesn't have true damage. Like, if the enemies have a Garen or a Vayne or a Camille, never build this item on Alistar. But if they don't build it, because the reason that Twin Guard is going to be extremely powerful if the enemy doesn't have true damage, is because Alistar already has his ultimate, which you know, which reduces a lot of damage from the enemies. And then after your ultimate, you're going to have stacked up the armor on Twin Guard as well. So essentially, you're you know, you're going to be unkillable during the whole fight because you're going to have so much armor and magic resist. That's why I told you you want to make sure the enemy doesn't have true damage because if they have true damage, you're much better off going for an item like a Frozen Heart, Randoms Omen, or even a Warmock. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it, it depends, it depends. But most games, Twin Guard is actually going to be a really, really solid item as, like, your third item. Um, as I said, you know, if you get Twin Guard third, you can go Zeke's Convergence for Zeke's is just such a good item on Alistar. But keep in mind, you do have to have, like, a good ADC for it to be truly worth it, of course. And then, fight with it in Randomance Omen or a Frozen Heart, depending on the game. If they have a lot of crit, Randomance Omen, otherwise Frozen Heart. Thornmill is another item you'll want to try to fit in. You can get a Bramble Fast, like, right after your Deadman's Plate if you need anti-healing. And even if you don't need anti-healing, I actually still kind of recommend you to build this item because it gives you more damage. You're going to become such a monster. Like, you'll see. You'll see, guys. And for the enchantment, I actually always recommend Protobelt. Even if you're not that good on Alistar, you have to get used to Protobelt because the thing about Alistar is... People tend to feel safe when they're far away from Alistar. But then you just protobelt in their faces and you knock them up and you kill them. That's the whole thing. Like, that's how I went 1 on 9 on Ash support last game, to be honest. So, protobelt is, like, absolutely mandatory when you play Alistar. It's so, so powerful. And if you know how to play it, it's, it's going to be unbeatable in, most, in some games. And then here you go for Aftershock. Weakness. And here I like to go bone plating, just honestly for the early game. Because, like, sure, you can go, you know, conditioning for the late game. But you don't need it. You already have enough armor and magic exists in the late game. So, like, being fine in the early game is probably going to be more important. So, you go bone plating. If you're against a poking lane, you know, if you're against, like, a Caitlyn and a Nami, for example. You can actually also go for second wind. 
just to stay healthy in your lane. And unfortunately, you got Pathfinder. Do this if you actually are a good Alistar player and constantly want to roam around and gank. If you're not that good yet, you can also go for Pack Hunter, which is going to be a little nice in your lane. But I recommend you to try out Pathfinder and play around it. For the spells, you go for Ignite and Flash. So that is it about the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. I actually don't recommend. I, I, I actually don't remember how I played this game. Um, I'm still on the laptop, by the way, so I apologize for any quality, any bad quality in this video. As I said, I will pick winners from the giveaway when I have my computer back, so I haven't forgotten about that one. So let's talk about level one with Alistar, because it already gets interesting at level one. There is a way that you can catch the enemy. Like, for example, if the enemy is not in that bush, uh, or if the enemy comes late to lane, you can walk in this bush, and then use, um, you can walk in this bush, and if, if the Kai'Sa steps too far, I can use my second ability to push her back. But I misclicked my third ability. I misclicked the third ability upgrade, guys. This is so annoying. I misclicked it. I meant to take second ability. And you know what I was going to do? I was going to flash behind her and push her into my Varus. Because then he could exhaust her and we would kill her easily. Oh my god. That is so tragic. Like, how, I, 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 still don't rem I still don't know how I misclicked my third ability. I still don't know. Now I have to wait until level 3 until I'm useful. It's so dumb. Actually, so, so dumb. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> like, look at me. I could have just knocked up the Blitzcrank right here. We could have done some damage, but nope. I gotta wait till level 3, I guess. It's really annoying. Really, really annoying. Yeah, just making sure I don't get hooked. By the way, Alistar counters Blitzcrank. Because if you get hooked in, you can actually just knock up the Blitzcrank and push him back into your team. Or like, he, nooks, he hooks you in. You can go into that backline and use your ultimate. Like, Alistar is a really good counter to Blitzcrank. Because Blitzcrank never really wants to hook Alistar. So you can basically body block the hook, right? Now I finally have it. There we go. I ignited him, but Blitzcrank hooked me away from the Kai'Sa. That was actually a pretty nice hook away. But still, you can see this is totally worth it for us to do. This was totally worth it. We, we, you know, they flashed. We are healthier than them. Um, this, this was just absolutely worth it. I could flash and, and, and just go on the Alistar here. I'm gonna die for it, but then she's gonna lose a lot of farm. But it seems like we could possibly kill both of them anyways. I let him hook me. And then I go in and I flash out. I didn't even take a turret shot. Oh, no, no, no. Come on. I put my control ward here just... Oh, so we would have vision. Ah, oh, he's just... Just... Just too far away. Oh, he's... Come on, Nunu, you can dive him. Go. No. You can ah uh, okay now it's now we're kind of screwed. Okay, now we're kind of screwed. Now we went a little bit too far. He says easy two kills. I didn't have abilities at the time that he meant. Like I couldn't dive them uh, as much as I could have. Yeah, this is not an ideal. This is not an ideal early game. By the way, when you play Alistar, um, you can see right now I'm using my control ward, and that's because I just want to have control in my lane. <laughs> Get it? But. When you get into the mid game, and actually this game I tested out just going for control ward very often. But, um, uh, what is the helicopter called? The red helicopter? The sweeper. When you have sweeper, it's actually generally better. Because, as I said, as an Alistar, like here you can see I'm ganking mid lane. As an Alistar, you're going to be ganking lanes very often. So having a sweeper allows you to sneak on the enemies. Because, of course, with a sweeper, they can't see you unless they have a control ward. Now let's actually talk about drafting with Alistar. Because there are some very important things you need to know about drafting with Alistar. First and foremost, you want to avoid true damage. You know, if this wasn't obvious, let me tell you. You know, uh, uh, um, Olaf counters Alistar. Vayne counters Alistar. Garen counters Alistar. Camille counters Alistar. D these are the types of champions that counter Alistar. Darius counters Alistar. All for the same reason, true damage. Alistar hates true damage. So you, you, tr you need to try to keep away from true damage champions. And th like that's the first step, basically. Really don't pick Alistar into vain and true damage champions. Another thing is you want to try to not pick Alistar into very mobile ADCs. For example, Lucian, um, um, Vayne, uh, there's another one, Ezreal. Because these ADCs can actually jump out of your CC combo, if you didn't know. Like if you go in with your second ability, they can actually jump out of it. So... You want to be a little bit careful of that and try to... You, you, you can pick it against them, don't get me wrong, but I'm just giving you advice on, like, the ideal draft, you know what I mean? 
Because this game, you can see, is a very good draft. Only Olaf really counters me. Actually, to be fair, it's not that ideal. Kai'Sa is also decent into Alistar. Not amazing, but decent. But it's still good enough. Like, this draft is definitely a game where you can play Alistar. Oh, and what do you want to pick Alistar against? Alistar hard counters. Hard, hard, hard counters. Poking champions. For example, Orianna, Zix, or like long-range champions like Caitlyn. Like Ash, like you know, like like Brand. You, well, actually, Brand is a questionable one, but you can dive them. You can dive them because when you get a Proto Belt and with your Flash and with your Ultimate to take away CC, you can dive them. And when you dive them, your team can follow up, and you can see where it goes, right? Like you can kill them. You can just kill them. So like that's what Alistar counters. If your team needs engage, you pick Alistar. You know, if the enemies have long range champions. That your team has a hard time reaching, you pick Alistar and you reach them yourself. I can get a Deadman's Blade now. And you'll see, with a Deadman's Blade, you'll become so unbelievably fast. It's actually crazy. It's, it's ridiculous. By the way, guys, make sure you give the video a like if you're enjoying it. It really supports the channel and everything like that. Um, I, ha I have something to say, but... I'm curious about something actually. I'm gonna ask you. I know. A lot, I know some people just wanna watch gameplay, but I, I'm curious about this one because I'm in a situation where I joined, uh, or actually, like a manager agency reached out to me. Their, their name is Blackshore, and I joined them. Essentially, they're gonna find sponsors for my channel, so I can make more money. Um, but I wonder, like, how far would I be able to go? Like. Let's go to the most extreme example, the most extreme example, which is if I get a sponsor for every single video, right? Let's say every single video has like a 30 second sponsor. How annoying would that be to you guys? Because right now, I I'm not getting a lot of sponsors myself. You know, maybe, maybe like once a month or something. But like, we're going to the most extreme. It's not going to happen, but ju just the most extreme example. How annoying is that? Because to me, the payoff is good. Like, I am going to make more money. You know, I can actually make a proper living with this. To me, the payoff is good. But, like, for example, when I did the Raid Shadow Legends stream, you know, the, the game was fun and stuff. But I saw that some, you know, some viewers didn't enjoy it when I do sponsors. And I get it. Because, you know, the YouTubers that I watch, I, I, I you know, I don't like sponsors very often either. So, like, there is, there's this thing. I could try to find a balance between finding the real good sponsors and then, you know, not getting sponsored as often. Or just taking, taking a lot, taking a lot of sponsors, even some sponsors that maybe not pay me that much, maybe that are not that much quality, um, and just make a, you know make more money, make a better living out of it. I wonder what I wonder what the best thing would be, because I have you know I have said no to quite a decent amount of sponsors, but that was not now because now I'm not making as much money as last year because last year I was doing really really well. And I actually said no to a lot of sponsors, a lot of silly games, you know, gacha games and stuff like that. I said no to them because I was like, you know what? It's not worth the money to promote this to my audience. Like, because, you know, I, I was making enough already. But now, I'm still making, oh, you know, I'm still making enough. But, you know, I don't have a college degree and everything like that. So, I need to make most out of this situation, basically. So... My philosophy now has changed a little bit. And again, I'm, I'm being 100% transparent with you guys. Right there. You know, normally a YouTuber shouldn't really say this, but like, I would honestly be open to, to promote lower quality things just for the pay. So I could make a little bit more money with my YouTube channel. But I wonder, I wonder if it's truly worth it. Because what would you guys think about it, right? Like, and, you know, look, I know there's going to be mixed response. I know there's going to be people, yeah, make a living. That's good. Blah, blah, but I want to hear honest response. Like, how would you, like, what would you think if I promoted, like, an absolute, like, like just a bad service from a website just so I get paid from it, right? Like, did, I, I, like, I'll be lying and saying this is good, blah, blah, blah. But, like, th that's the thing, you know, that's the thing a YouTuber has to do. Because if we go to an even more extreme example, like, g gambling, for example. Like, let's say a gambling website wants to sponsor... For example, th this is all not happening, but, like, I'm trying to give you guys context on what I'm talking about. You know, gambling websites pay an insane amount of money, but obviously I would be promoting gambling, which is something I do not stand for. So, like, you know, you're, you're basically selling your soul. 
So it's a really hard choice between like making a proper living sometimes and uh, you know being a decent person because I want to be decent. I want to promote the right things to my audience. But then at some point, you know, there's sometimes there's not enough right things to promote. And then I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm not making enough money maybe and I'm going to be in trouble. You know what I mean? So there's this fine balance and I'm going to have a meeting with them very soon to talk about these kinds of things. You know, like what do I want? Um, what is going to be the boundary? You know, it's, it's, I don't know. I'm a bit stuck in this type of thing on what is the right choice and what isn't the right choice because, you know, <laughs> It's, it's different when you're making a lot of money because then, you know, you have the power to say no to whatever you want. As opposed to... Because because this is an example my uncle gave to me. Like, my uncle, he, he does he does uh, building projects. Like, I actually worked with him a, a lot. I never got paid by him because I didn't want to. But I worked with him a lot just for the fun of it. Like, I, I basically told him, like, why are you taking this? You know, so, like, some deals would come where he really wouldn't get paid enough. And I told him, like, why are you doing this? He's like, listen, buddy. I'm gonna teach you a very important lesson today. My ch my kids have to have food on the table, and if I don't get if I don't take this job, they're not gonna have food on the table. So I have to take this less paying job just to put food on their table. I'm desperate. That's what he said. Now my uncle is making a ton of money, and he's saying no to this. And he told me, "Come here. Remember what I told you? Now you know he has a better name. Like people actually, a lot of people are asking him to do jobs. He told me, look." Now I have enough jobs to do, I'm making enough money, now I can raise my prices and say no. Exactly the same happened to my channel, like, you know, I was doing content for Wild Rift Esports, I was a commentator, my YouTube channel was doing way better, so like, I said no. You know, I, that was the advice that I took from him, I was like, look, I'm gonna take the quality only and say no. But now, I'm in that same situation, I'm not desperate, but I'm in that same situation where, you know, I'm making a lot less, and I am pro- I, I suppose- I'm supposed to say yes to more. So like, now I'm trying to find that fine line. Right, like, I'm trying to find that fine line. Alright, so that, that that was the internal discussion that I've been having with myself uh, in my head. Look at how much damage I'm doing in the game, by the way. But yes, I want to be honest, you can expect more sponsors on the channel. Which is great, but of course it's going to be a little bit annoying in the videos. But you can expect more sponsors, hopefully. But like, uh, otherwise the new agency is not going to do too well for me. So yes, a little bit of an update. And if you've been paying attention to the game, by the way, I have been destroying this enemy. I've made their lives absolute hell. Like, they, they can't do anything. And there's multiple, multiple things you can do with Alistar's abilities. You know, Alistar is very good at engaging. You know, you go in with your second ability and you engage. But Alistar is also really good at pushing away an enemy from your team. Let me explain. For example, Riven goes on your backline, right? She flashes in. She goes on your backline. You have, you know, you, you have a few choices. You can ignore Riven, go in. You can go on the Riven with your second ability, first ability and everything. Or you can simply just push Riven away. Only use your second ability. You push her away, boink. Maybe you're, boink, maybe you're gonna boink her over a wall. And she's gonna, be, uh, she's gonna be off of your carries. This can be the right choice, right? Like if the, if the enemy hyper carry is on your backline, Camille, Yasuo, Riven, these dangerous champions for your ADCs and your mid laner. You can just boink them away with your second ability. You don't have to go on them because... Let's say you go on them. Second ability, first ability, third ability. You knock them up, but they don't die. And then they just keep going on your backline, right? Like, that can definitely happen. So, like, that's why I told you. Sometimes it's just better to push them away. You know, just to boink them away with your second ability. He was, he was just a little bit out of range, by the way, this Riven. So, I couldn't hit her. Oh. Yeah, I was walking around in case Riven would show up. Yeah, here, I am not gonna point him away because we can catch him, right? Like we can catch the Yasuo. And me with my dead man's plate. Look at how fast I am. Look, I am gonna catch him. I'm trying to dodge his tornado. There we go. And I I'm always gonna catch him. There is no one that's gonna be faster than me when I have this built. on Look, I catch him always. So I catch him here, as you can see. I'm trying to reach him. I am gonna catch him again, though. Even if he tornadoes me, I'm gonna catch him, but he actually ults us. But it's fine, look! No one can run away when you have this build. This is why I told you, Deadman's Plate is a phenomenal item when you play Alistar. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. No one is gonna catch you. I am in a bit of trouble now, though. But the Ferris is coming to my safety. I ulted here, but it doesn't really matter, because Olaf is gonna do true damage anyway. So perhaps my ult was a waste of mana. 
Maybe I shouldn't have ulted here because it really didn't do anything right here. Look at them. They both have the Amaran Twin Guard. That's disgusting. They're both unkillable for my team. It was a bait. This was just a bait. Because I saw the set coming and I knew Blitzcrank would hook me. I purposely didn't go. I, I purposely backported there. And that's honestly a lesson that I want to teach you guys as well. Baiting can be truly a really strong thing in Wilder. Like right there, I was backporting, but I was baiting. I knew the Blitz was going to hook me. And I knew that even if I died, Set would kill both of them. And at the end, I didn't even die. So I literally just baited them by, by teleporting within the range of Blitzcrank. You know, pretending like I don't know what's going on. He then hooks me. Olaf thinks, oh, that's a free kill. But he doesn't know that Set is right around the corner and killed both of them. I have to be a little bit careful. Am I making a mistake? My team is fighting, but I want to go for this Riven. I am going to reach her, but am I going to kill her? There's no way, right? Because I'm not... Oh, by the way, when, when someone is close to the wall, the way... Yeah, that's the way you want to do it. When someone is close to a wall, like the outer edges of the map... Oh, I'm actually diving him? Oh, baby! Oh, baby! Oh, he stays assisted. Oh, come on. Really, I don't kill him? But what I was going to say is, when someone is close to the outer edges of the wall, I'm not going to kill him, really. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, 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 no! Oh, I'm alive. Yeah, when someone is close to the outer edges of the wall, you want to use your second ability, knock them into the wall, and then when the, when the knock-up runs out, then you knock them up again. This way, you're going to have much longer CC than if you would have just done, you know, second ability, first ability. It's way better if you can do it that way, if they're close to the wall. So, keep that in mind. It can be very powerful, you know, the enemies are going to be CC'd for like ages when you do it like that. And I keep talking about random things, by the way, because the overwhelming response from the audience is that they kind of enjoy when I talk about these random things. I am reading the comments saying that I need to focus on the gameplay. Look, I'm reading all, I'm reading all of the feedback and I appreciate it. Like, I thank you for your feedback, really. Even if you're saying like, you know, I really don't like your videos anymore because you're not talking as much about Wildrift. Um, my honest response to that is, sometimes I want to, you know, I'm not as 100 million percent passionate about Wildrift as I used to be. I love the game, don't get me wrong, but it's not like, like, sometimes I just want to talk about something else. And that's why I'm doing it, and that's the most sustainable way of me making videos. And I'm gonna keep at it even though I'm gonna lose some viewers over it. I, I'm sorry to those viewers that are not enjoying the videos as much anymore, but I have to, you know, I hate to say it like this, but it's more important that I am enjoying this than that you guys are enjoying it in the way that if I don't enjoy this, you know, the video quality is going to go down. You know, I'm not going to make as many videos. So like, even if, even if some of the audience is going to be dissatisfied, it's better if the majority is satisfied and if I am satisfied, right? Like that, that, that's, that the videos are just going to be better that way and it's going to be more sustainable. Look at how crazy I am, by the way. I'm almost level 15, by the way. I've been getting crazy levels this game. Oh, you know what's funny? Um, um, my playstyle in the game... I'm gonna talk more about this, this thing as well. You need to identify your playstyle. But my playstyle in Wild Rift, in general, is I tend to go for late game, always. Like, I, oh, I'm very good at farming, playing safe, and going for late game. I'm not as good at being aggressive. For example... Like, if I play Lee Sin, it's hard for me, because as a Lee Sin, you have to be aggressive. But when I play, when I play a late-game champion, like Shivana, like, you know, like any late-game champion, it generally works way better for me, because I'm very good at, at playing safe, farming as much as I can, and not dying too often in the early game. So, like, Kill, for example, is the perfect champion for me. You know what's funny? I found a challenger, I found a challenger Kill one trick, who has, like, a 67% win rate on Kill. I found him in solo queue, we destroyed the enemy, so I added him, I was like, you know, we, we have the same playstyle, you're playing kill, so you're going for the late game, and I am also a super late game player, so I played games with him, and I, I won like 85% of those games, like, because we both understand each other, it's so funny, like, almost every game, we're just 2v8ing the game, like, I'll play an enchanter support, he'll play kill jungle, and we just win, or like, I'll play Orianna in the mid lane, you know, we'll just win. It's, it's really it's really funny how when you find a player who has this exact same playstyle as you, that you can win many more games. Like, for example, if you're very good early game, you know, you're very good early game, you play champions like Draven, Lee Sin, etc. And you find another player that's a very aggressive early game support, for example, you're gonna have so much more success 
than if you just, you know, if you just invite a random really good support. Because a, a, a player can be really good, but if it doesn't fit your playstyle, it can still not pay off as much as having a player that's not as good, but exactly fits your playstyle. That's a very interesting concept that I found out recently, by the way. I have a lot more success when I play with, with players that have my playstyle as opposed to just players that are very good, you know what I mean? So that is, that is it for the video. Let's take a look. I was actually better than 100% Alistar. So you didn't see it here, but I was better 100%. 30,000 damage. I'm, I'm a support, by the way, huh? <laughs> Let me go to the face cam real quick. So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see. Wait, it's always this finger, actually, not the other finger. I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.